located in the subarctic and straddling the Arctic Circle. The geographic region of Baltica is rich with geological and biological diversity. On the southwest coast of the Scandinavian Peninsula, ancient stones reach into the Baltic Sea, and in traveling over them we will explore some of Earth's oldest geological structures. Upon this ancient rock, a diverse range of forests thrive, including the boreal and nemoral forest zones. Just as these forests support hundreds of species of animal life, the rock beneath them conceals billions of years of our planet's history. Just 25,000 years ago, this vibrant boreal landscape was buried under several kilometers of ice. Earth was a much different planet at the time, with global average temperatures being about 6 degrees Celsius cooler than today. During the last glacial maximum, ice sheets extended deep into the heart of the European continent, and many of today's temperate zones were concealed under the advancing ice sheets. However, it was an important time in the history of the planet, as well as for life on Earth, for the scepter of a changing climate led to very different prospects in the subarctic. Gradually, the temperature began to warm and the ice sheets began to recede. No longer compressed under the immense weight of the ice, the underlying rock began to expand in a process known as isostatic rebound. In the wake of the ice, the geological forces, in conjunction with sea level rise, created a large, brackish Mediterranean Sea, thus isolating the Scandinavian peninsula from the rest of continental Europe. The Baltic Sea was born. These were turbulent times in the region, for the retreat of the ice was both swift and violent. The retreating ice left deep scars in the underlying bedrock, which today form hundreds of lakes and small catchment basins which capture our modern subarctic rains. The retreat of the ice revealed a primordial geological structure, the Baltic Shield. Here, a section of the geological nucleus of the Eurasian continent is exposed. With an age of 1.0 to 3.5 billion years, many of these crystalline rocks predate the evolution of multicellular life on our planet. The Baltic Shield is truly ancient, for its oldest structures contain geological information for over half of the Earth's 4.5 billion year history. As the ice retreated, life moved northward to fill in the void. Vast boreal forests began to thrive throughout the subarctic belt. These forests, composed primarily of pines, firs, and spruce, blanket the landscape in a continuous belt about the Arctic Circle. On the southernmost stretches of the boreal zone, we see many different species thriving amongst the conifers, including birch, oak, and elm. In the modern era, these glacial lakes are an integral part of the ecology of the southern stretches of the boreal zone in Scandinavia. Within their clear, cold waters, a great diversity of aquatic life can be found. Gulls, ducks, crows, and finches are common sights along their shorelines. Here, the eternal, golden light of summer falls upon a vibrant landscape in which geology and biology generate a diverse ecology. In the fading light of another long day, the still waters of the lake echo a calmness which bespeaks of meditation. In a place where a billion years of history can be found in a single stone, the mystery of life can be felt in the calmness of its reflections. Moving to the west, we approach the coast and find many changes in the forests. The coastal forests of southern Scandinavia are among the most unique in the world. Warmed by the perpetual drift of the Gulf Stream, these demoral forests are an oddity considering their latitude. The rains are abundant, and the average temperature rarely drops far below freezing in these regions. These coastal mixed forests harbor an astonishing level of diversity and within them, many nanoclimactic treasures can be found. Flying over the inky black waters of this hidden birch swamp, many small islands spread out beneath us. 
However, these are not ordinary islands of soil and stone, for they are formed by a heavy cover of grasses and shrubs that have fruited themselves in the rich sediment at the bottom of the swamp. These are living islands, and on them we can find other colonizers such as birch and rowan. The living islands of the swamp are sanctuaries, offering a safe habitat for many species of insect, fish, and waterfowl. Each of them is a microcosm, offering a unique and constantly evolving set of conditions which attracts many species to them. The Nemoral Swamps are truly amazing places, and with patience and persistence, many types of bird life can be observed in them. Because these swamps harbor a tremendous amount of insect life, they are very popular breeding places for ducks and geese. In the late spring, these magnificent birds can often be seen soaring together over the swamp. Meanwhile, their young can often be spotted in the safe harbor of the living islands which spread out upon its surface. Flying over the coastal forests, we can only begin to grasp the diversity of their inhabitants. Within them, we find a host of species bound together towards the pursuit of life in the north. Rising over a dark coast, the Baltic Shield finds its end in the stretched continental crust of northwestern Europe. Here the ancient shield rock, aged in the billions of years, dives into the Baltic Mediterranean to meet a rock of a more modern era, aged only in the tens of millions of years. Battered by strong ocean currents and fierce, steady winds, we find a barren landscape that is reminiscent of the end of the world. However, the Shalon Lighthouse of Marstrand stands to mark the terminus of the Baltic Shield to all who pass through the nearby waters. Built in 1944, it reminds all who sail of the risky geology that hides beneath the surface, and it beckons a lesson of caution to all who find themselves at its base. Here we rise above a dramatic geological frontier which cuts through the crust of the earth, the Turnkist Line. Only from above is it possible to grasp the magnitude of these geological structures which run through the entire continent of Europe. To the northeast, we find the Baltic Shield, which contains some of the oldest rocks of the European continent. To the southwest, under the shallow seas, we find the stretched continental crust which has been gradually built up via a much more modern geology. On the southwest coast of Sweden, we find some of the youngest geological structures within the Baltic Shield. This is the Sveco Norwegian domain, which is aged from 0.9 to 1.2 billion years. Within these stones, one can find the signatures of primordial orogenic and metamorphic processes. Located on the edge of the Baltic Shield, this rock was exposed to tremendous tectonic forces causing it to adopt its characteristic banded and rutilated appearance. Along the Baltic coast, many ocean birds can be seen enjoying themselves on the isolated rocks. Here, with a variety of gulls standing by, an irritated Atlantic yellow-nosed albatross is lifting off to investigate our perspective. At a thickness between 200 to 300 kilometers, the Baltic Shield is one of the thickest lithospheric structures on the planet. It is a complex structure which contains many geological domains whose ages are distributed over a 2.5 billion year time span. The oldest of these structures, aged at 3.5 billion years, can be found north of the Arctic Circle in the Achaean rock of the Kola Peninsula. Here the youngest strata of the Baltic Shield reach out into an open sea, creating many freshwater and saltwater tide pools along the shore. Within these pools, subtle variations in salinity and temperature yield unique microclimates where varying colonies of marine life can flourish, including snails, urchins, crabs, and shellfish. Upon the rocky coast, there are also many inlets which are well protected from large waves and strong currents. The narrow inlets provided by the geology serve as excellent safe harbors for even the strongest of storms. Just inland from the coast, 
many large freshwater and brackish ephemeral pools can be found. And within these natural rain gauges, one can gain a keen sense of the health of this magnificent environment. Indeed, the edge of the Baltic Shield hides many secrets, and within its coastal ecology, a tremendous amount of geological and biological diversity can be found. Its cool subarctic winds will always serve as a source of inspiration to all who set foot upon its primordial shores. The Baltic Shield rises once again from the cool waters of the subarctic Mediterranean Sea. Traveling upwards, the southern end of a complex, rocky archipelago gradually comes into view. Nearly six kilometers off the mainland, these islands enjoy a unique oceanic climate which exhibits some Mediterranean features. Like gems scattered upon a deep aqua sea, these final extrusions of the Baltic Shield hint at a very complex subsurface geology. Heading east over the southern tip of the island of Ranga, we find a special island forest. Here on the island, the soil quality is poor and the winds are harsh, and there is very little for a young sapling to take root in. However, small groves of pine, rowan, and birch struggle upwards towards the subarctic summer light. Here on the islands, they leverage a unique geographic advantage as temperatures are moderated strongly by the northbound currents of the Gulf Stream. It is never too cold here, though there are other challenges to maintaining life on the islands. On the coast, the grey rock of the Baltic Shield appears once again, thus establishing the archipelago's plutonic connection with the east. At the island's junction with the sea, many coves and inlets seem to bless its familiar convex surfaces with the colors of life. The waters here are alight with many strange hues of emerald and azure such that one would never guess that they lie just a thousand kilometers south of the Arctic Circle. Here, a mating pair of swans can be seen enjoying the rare warm day. Behind them lies a series of coastal inlets and beaches which harbor many uncommon plant species, including wild asparagus, willow leaf, yellowhead, and sea holly. However, the open waters of the Baltic seem to be calling them to perhaps a more peaceful resting place. Life on the islands is challenging, however, even the most intrepid islanders are entitled to their moments in the sun. On their wings, we are reminded of the need to respect the balance and counterbalance in nature. All things in the geosphere and biosphere move according to the law of action, and only on the stable flight of this wisdom can we strive southward towards the warmer stretches of inspiration. On the eastern side of the island, we find several well-protected coves and sandy beaches which offer another perspective on island life. Safe from the winds, the still waters offer both tranquility and prosperity to all who visit their shores. Life here is somewhat easier than on the windward side of the island, and these small rocks attract many avian visitors from the hardship of the west. It is in this region that the tallest pines of the island may be found, glowing in the tangerine rays of sunset. The northern forest shines in the evening, its soft greens turning rusty against the fading light of day. Within its arms can be seen many species, and for this reason it may be seen as a perfect microcosm of the forests which blanket the coast of the mainland. However, the specimens here are well adapted to island life, and in their minimalism they remind us that we are never far from nature. Diving finally over the sandy beaches, the Baltic Shield rises in the distance, reminding us from whence we began. Our journey over Baltica is complete, and we have found the end in the beginning of its primordial geology. From the boreal forests and glacial lakes of the interior to the numoral forests of the islands, we find that the law of equilibrium is our guiding star. Although nature works her complexity in many ways, she will always enforce a balance along her guiding lines of action.
If you enjoyed this short documentary on the geology, biology, and ecology of the Baltic area, please hit that like button and subscribe. Also, if you would like to help support independent media and independent filmmaking, please head on over to my Patreon account and send me a couple dollars. If you're interested in helping out, you can find a link to my Patreon account in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'm looking forward to having you along for the next one.